introduction. Um, as Ken said, uh, Len said, oh, my name is John Trett. I um, I'm, have a problem, and it's a very serious problem. I have the biggest disability of any person in the UK. And I don't know whether you can guess what that is, but I am almost profoundly deaf. I have to lip read you. I, ha I have special equipment to answer the phone, and so on. But the, the uh, problem is that deafness is totally hidden. You can't tell I'm deaf unless I wear a big flag. I don't have a stick. I don't have a peg leg. I don't have glasses. One in ten of the UK population have impaired hearing. So we're going to do a quick snap straw here. Hand up all people who think they have impaired hearing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's not bad, about 10. So we're uh, on average about right. So I'm going to try and explain to you today just what it means to be deaf. So the first thing is, I want you to understand hearing loss. I've lost the zipper, oh, here it is. Um, I've got here a um, picture of the ear. And the most common problems are to do with the cochlea. And the cochlea has millions of little hairs in it, and they die off as you get old. In my particular case, I, my, I was doing pretty well. My hearing was very, very good. But three years ago, I caught a virus in a swimming pool, and it made me deaf overnight. So I've, um, I'm struggling, but I cope, and I'm still helping with Andrew to run a, a business. So we're doing pretty well out of it. Um, the next most common problem is the diaphragm, or the eardrum there, um, and that can get infected, it can get perforated. And uh, then there's all sorts of mechanical things in the middle there, which uh, can be uh, missing. Uh, for example, my brother was born with no hammer in his, in his ear, in his middle ear. So the, um, you've got a real problem once you start use, losing hearing in the cochlea, and that is age-related. So you go to your doctor and they say, all right, let's take an audiogram. And the first thing they do is they take various readings of various frequencies all through. And normal hearing is across the top there. This, by the way, is known as the banana graph. And it's always yellow. And it shows what sounds you can hear at various frequencies. So high frequencies, such as and children talking are up there, and low frequencies, the uh, Ds and the Bs and this sort of thing, are down at the bottom. So um, as you get older and your hairs die off, the most common source of loss of hearing is age-related. So you suddenly can't hear high frequencies. So you are at a disadvantage. And uh, this, by the way, the bottom one is my hearing. I have I'm minus 80 decibels, and everybody here will know that every 10 decibels is half volume. So without my hearing aids, I hear a 256 of the volume that you hear. And just to put out in perspective, when I go to the loo, I can't hear myself pee, but I can hear just about the toilet flush. So you've got the idea of where we are. Um, so they put hearing aids in, and the trouble with hearing aids is they're trying to compensate for this loss of frequency by inverting the amplification. So they give, give you um, a lot of high frequency amplification and minimum low frequency. But they also have to use compression because they can't give you too much volume or you blow your eardrums out. So um, you, you get what's called a barrage of sound. And uh, so I'm listening and trying to identify in a barrage of sound, what you're saying, but other people um, don't get this barrage, so they're able to pick up what's being said. So I'm at a real disadvantage to start with. And then we come to what you get in the lift. And they use little tinny speakers, about this size quite often. They, they're all treble, no bass. And then we get the telephone system in the lift. And that's even worse, because it uses CCITT standards, which means that they only send out the middle frequencies. 
So there I am with hearing loss and I can only hear there and I can only hear there and no one's sending me any signal so I can hear. So I'm, I'm starting to struggle. So what do, what do we do about it? Oops, didn't work. We stick a loop amplifier in the, in the lift car. Uh, there are other technologies available, but the most common one is the loop because everybody with hearing aids will have a telecoil, that's a little coil, magnetic coil, inside their hearing aids, which will allow them to pick up a magnetic field. And, it's and so we put on top of the lift the audio signal inputs. Um, we put in into loop electronics, and the loop electronics is a current amplifier, usually about two and a half amps, which then feeds a loop of quite heavy um, copper, quite thick diameter, two and a half mil or thereabouts, which produces an audio magnetic field. I don't remember your physics days, you know, uh, current, field, motion. Well, this loop has to be the correct way round, and it has to be flat, and it has to be above or below my face, because otherwise the field that is generated is not the same orientation as the field in my um, hearing aids. We'll come back to that in a minute. Now, the problem is as well that not only am I getting a barrage of sound, but I'm also getting a distortion. And I will tell you that the loop system in this room I have tried to use, and it is totally unusable. I'm hearing... <laughs> In other words, it's all distorted. I've had to switch off. I'm sitting in the front row and I'm lip reading. Because, and this is so common and it is a disgrace that the loops in lifts are not <coughs> set up correctly. They're all set up for distortion um, and never calibrated. So we've got three types of uh, problems. The first one is clipping, where the amplitude is set too great on the, and you're um, saturating the, the amplifier. You've got a uh, second harmonic distortion where the amplifier is not linear. And you've got background electrical interference. And there's a lot of that in lifts. But fortunately, the loop itself is very low impedance, usually about 0.2 of an ohm. So the electrical interference can't really establish itself, itself fairly well there. So here we come to little tele hear hearing aids. And I've got one of those in my hearing aid, a little telecoil. And that, I said, that's the cross-section of the cable, the loop, and it's producing this magnetic field, and the telecoil must be in that field to pick up the signal. And uh, so uh, that's, that's what I'm living with there. Now, there are two types of installation that are used in lifts. One is a little coil behind the COP. And that gives a field which is something like that. In fact, that's an exaggeration. I would suggest it's only a quarter of that, the actual field. And uh, what it means is that unless I'm standing in this tiny little field and moving my head around to pick up the, the uh, magnetic field in the coils in my hearing aids, I will not pick up the, the loop signals. So get into a lift, standing at the back, and there's an announcement on the... Uh, going up, going down, going around the bend, whatever, and you, are, you can't hear it because you're not in front. And if you're in a lift and you're in a disabled situation on your own, you've got to know to move around until you've put your head in the right position to actually hear the telephone. But the other one, and it's a bit faint this, but if you look at the notes, you'll see it better, is a, a coil across the top of the car. And that produces a vertical field. It could be in the ceiling, or it could even be in the floor, but that's a bit impractical usually. Um, and we, so this field, this um, audio magnetic field, is as a column down the lift. So we're going to try and calibrate them. I'm, I'm going to bypass the inst installation instructions. They're, they're pretty comprehensive in the notes that I wrote up before this thing. But unless they're calibrated, unless we get rid of the distortion, unless we get 
with the right amplitude and all this sort of thing, they will not work. So we end up with um, the first thing to do is to try and calibrate them. And I've got here the one that I use. There are several on the market, um, which takes frequencies into it and tests for those frequencies. It tests at 1 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, and 100 hertz. And you must calibrate the lift to those particular the field to those frequencies. And more to the point, you must move it all the way round. So it's no good having one of these little ones in the middle of the COP, because you move it past it, oh yes, there's a signal, and you move it round and nothing else. And even worse, nobody knows how to use these. I would challenge anyone in this room to know any lift company who's actually got a calibration system. Hands up, anybody. I know of two companies only who actually calibrate their loop amplifiers. So it's, it, it is a disgrace. If you go into a lift and you see the buttons and you know, oh, that's the main floor, it's the green one, it's sticking forward. People with impaired vision know that and can use it. If I go into a lift and I'm deaf, I can't hear what's going on, I'm disadvantaged. So where I'm coming from is that unless you calibrate the loop system, you might as well forget it. And the one in this room, you might as well forget it. So you end up putting headphones on, because you've got hearing, and uh, you listen to what the sound is. So you know you've got a signal, but then you've got to calibrate it. You've got to calibrate it for that loss of distortion, the um, lack of amplification. You've got to check that the field strength is correct. And uh, once you've calibrated it, you can actually produce a calibration chart. Anybody here know of any building that's got a loop in it where they've produced a standard form, a certification, that loop has been set up correctly? Anybody? Isn't that horrible? Isn't that atrocious? So, the, and this is law. This is BS EN 601118-4. You're supposed to comply with it. So um, you've got background noise, you've got system noise, you've got magnetic field strength, that's moving it round. You've got frequency response at the three frequencies. Um, metal compensation, if the manufacturer has produced the loop system correctly, they will already have metal compensation set up for your tin box of your lift. You've got um, overspill, which is not really necessary, and you sign this off and you hand it over to the building owner. I know of two sites, funny enough, there's a site in Canary Wharf, Len, where they've actually done this. Only one of them. <laughs> and, uh, it's a start job. <laughs> it's not good. So, um, then once you've tested it, you go back and you regularly maintain it. So I've tested it with my system. It doesn't take long, I would say a quarter of an hour, to test all the frequencies. I put a little audio source in, which I've got from a USB stick and I test the field strength, <laughs> then it's got to be maintained. How many building owners are there here? Or people who are responsible for buildings, right? How many of you know how to, what a loop does and how to set it up? I know what it does, John. <laughs> I know what it does. You don't know how to set it up. Yeah. So I went into a building the other day in the city, and the, the, um, I, as they said to me, is our loop working? And I said, no. And they said, well, how do you know that? I said, well, I've got hearing aids so I can find it. But uh, um, what are we supposed to do about it? I said, well, in your maintenance manual, is there not a, a regular maintenance program for your loop setting up? And I said, what's that? And what we've got, and there's several of these here as well, these are just a couple, are little receivers with headphones. And at least you can go into the lift and say, I've got something here, I can hear it. You don't know whether it's distorted or not, but hopefully, because it's been calibrated in the first place, it's not like this loop here and distorted, so you can actually work with it and uh, you can actually um, check that the system's here. Sadly for me, I had uh, three very good friends died in the last 18 months. I went to High Wycombe Crematorium on th all three occasions. The first occasion I couldn't hear a word. So I gave the um, 
person in charge of the crematorium the, uh, a little note saying it doesn't work. The second time I had no response from the first occasion, so I gave him another lo a note, a little bit stronger, saying uh, your loop doesn't work. And, they, um, and he actually contacted me and he said, but we check it every week with one of these. I said, yes, but it's so distorted. It's never been set up, it's never been calibrated. And every loop, not just in lifts, needs to be calibrated. So the third time I, I went to a thing, I gave up. And I, I went and found him and I said, look, you're not getting your system done. I can't hear. Most people of my generation will have impaired hearing. Um, they need the loop. It isn't working. And that's just in one particular place. I go into shops, and every time I go into a shop, I ask for their loop system. Uh, I think it's in the drawer at the back there. Oh dear, how do we switch it on? It's so common that loops are not set up. And in fact, I'm part of a team now of uh, people, including from called Def Alerta in Derby, who are going around trying to get people to calibrate loop systems, not just in lifts, but everywhere. So, let me summarise this. Disability Discrimination Act. We all know that. We've all put our buttons in with uh, the green one on the main floor. We've all put the indicators at the correct height. We've all done all that sort of thing. But nobody has tackled disability for impaired hearing, and that is the most common form of uh, disability in the UK. And uh, so induction loops are popular because um, we can eliminate unwanted sounds. I explained to start with, you get a barrage of noise. You can identify and isolate that one sound you're trying to listen to. That's the telephone system or the um, voice thing. By the way, a loop should really have two inputs. I need to know the car's overloaded. I need to know that I've, uh, the doors are closing. So it shouldn't just be the telephone system. It should be the um, speech system as well in the lift. So it should have two inputs. Um, and on top of that, nearly all hearing aids have a telecoil. So people wearing he hearing aids automatically can pick up the sounds provided you put in the little blue label saying the telecall's fitted. Because again, I can't, no one's going to tell me there's a loop system fitted in this lift. I need to know. Um, and thirdly, magnetic induction is so reliable. Um, the previous speaker was talking about mobile phones and things like that. You put a, have your mobile phone in the lift, and the first thing that happens is a metal box shields it and it doesn't work. But magnetic fields in the lift from loops will work. And uh, uh, also, modern hearing aids are so complex and so advanced that they can adjust to pick up the sounds that you need. So I'm saying, once again, loop amplifiers must be calibrated to be installed correctly. And this is a real failing of the lift industry. Thank you, John.